Do you want to export a CSV from your Power App? Then let's just jump in how that works. So here I built a purchase orders app and we're going to see that we're going to go over here. We can select multiple ones. We're just going to select three of them. Down here, we're going to talk about select all, deselect all, right? So talk about selecting items in your gallery. And then we can see we're going to total it up. That'd be $6,000 worth. But really what we're after here is the export. So we're just going to press this button. It's going to run a Power Automate Cloudflow behind the scenes. It's going to generate that file and then attach it to an email, which I should have right about now. Boom, there it is. So you can see we pull the data in. We've got the exported CSV file, so that way you know how to work with the file. But then we also just attaches an HTML table down here. And you can see the data is not all cleaned up. We're going to talk about how to clean all this up as we go. That's what we want to learn today is all of these concepts. And we're going to do it by building an app with Copilot and then just customizing that because let's face it, all of your apps are going to be different. So we're not going to worry too much about the app. We're going to worry about adding functionality to your existing app. So let's just switch over to my desktop. And take a look. Here we are at make.powerapps.com. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use Copilot to build the app as quick as possible. It's a great way to build apps with some fake data to work with. But I'm also guessing you want to add this to an existing one of your apps. We're just trying to get me to an existing app as fast as we can. So we're going to say, please create me an app to track purchase orders. And we hit go. After about 15 seconds, we land in the new designer. You can see that there's a table for order items, purchase order, and supplier. Let's just check the data for purchase order. So look, we got order date, total amount, status, and supplier. Supplier is a lookup. This is perfect, right? This is enough to give us a reasonably complex app to work through. So we're just going to roll with it. There's a lot you can do here, but we're not going to unpack all that. We're just going to say save and open app. We're just going to say, hey, you want me to do this? Yes. And so what it's really doing now is it's now going to create those Dataverse tables for us and then the multi-screen app on top of it that we can take advantage of. So we'll wait one sec. After about a minute, it created this whole app for me. Remember also over here on the left, you can see that it created these three Dataverse tables and all of this is good to go. Now, speaking of the app, so the app that I just showed you and then the app we're about to build here and of course the flow we're gonna build with it, all of this will be packaged up as a solution. I'm gonna show you how we package it in a solution at the end. And then we're gonna make that available over at training.powerapps911.com. If you sign up for any of our training subscriptions, even our YouTube library, then you can download this, uh, watch the videos, all of that ad free over there. So please go check that out if you get a chance, training.powerapps911.com. So here we're good. So if we jump over, we'll hold on the Alt key and go to the purchase order screen. So this is very similar, almost identical to the screen that you saw before. Now, the first thing we need to do before we worry about exporting the CSV is we got to add that whole selection capability in there. Okay. Now, so to do that, what you're typically going to do is we're going to kind of go over here first and we're going to start with our gallery. Let's open up the property panel on the right and we'll resize this. Okay. Now what we want to probably do is kind of go over here. We're going to fiddle with this for a second. So we're going to grab purchase order. We'll kind of slide it up and then we we'll hit control C and control V. And I'm just trying to get a little bit more information in here. And so for this one, we're going to do this item dot supplier. Now supplier is a lookup. So you get that whole, this is a record thing. So you're going to hit a dot here and then we're just going to put in supplier name. Now understanding what the, how these work is going to be important to help us in a few minutes. That's why we want to put these in here. And then we're going to do one more. So we'll just do another control C, control V. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to make this one be our total amount. And then we're going to wrap that in a text function like that. And we're going to set the format to be something like that. So it looks like currency. Now we also, when you want to have that whole select option. Okay. So what we're going to do is you're just going to make sure you're still here and we're going to do an insert and we're going to search for checkbox like so. And then we're just going to drag the checkbox over wherever you want it. And we're going to get rid of the text. So we'll just delete that out. And then we're going to resize this over so then that way it's not on top of your text. Okay, so now we've got checkboxes. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another piece to this uh, container. So we got to be careful we add this in the right place. We don't want to add it to the gallery. We don't want to accidentally select one of these other containers in here. What we want to do is find our sidebar container, which is this whole purple box. And then we're going to do an insert under layout. And we're going to find ourselves a horizontal container. Okay. Now in this horizontal container, what we need is we're going to need three things. So we're going to need a button. So we'll insert a button first, and then we're going to insert a label, and then we're going to insert another button. Clearly those are all too big. So we're going to take these uh, first button here and we're going to set its width to be 50. Shrink that puppy up. There you go. We're going to set this one to be 50. And then we'll go ahead and set this, uh, the text box to be a flexible width which means use whatever space is available based on the device, right? Giving both of these always having 50. So this button 
is going to be uh, for select all. This one here is going, our label is going to show us kind of data. And so that's really the first thing we want to work on. We want to figure out how we've selected things, right? Because if we hit play now and we select a couple of these, so you can see we got two items selected there. The best thing we want to do is make sure we understand how to get to those. So we're going to do something like this total colon, and then we're going to say uh, ampersand, and then we're going to do a sum function. And then what is the name of our gallery? It is called records gallery two. So we're going to take record gallery two, all items, but we don't want all the items. We want to actually get a filter of that. So we're going to put a filter around this. We'll put filter out here in front. So filter that all items two, where our checkbox, so checkbox one dot value. So checkboxes, when you check them, the value is true. When you uncheck them, it's false. And a filter, it just wants a true or false here. So you don't have to write checkbox value equals true. You just write that. So that will return the table of those. And then what column do we want to sum up? We want to sum up the total amount column. And so if we close that, we should now see total 4,200. Perfect. So this is telling us it's got, we're working with the check things, right? If we unselect the 1,200, now it goes down. Now it's nothing. Now we've got a couple other ones selected. So we know how to see what is checked by using this uh, particular formula. Now we probably want to see that total uh, as currency, right? So we can throw a text function around that, that same type of function. So something like that. So now we see it formatted out. So that looks good, right? So we know that this formula gets the things. And this formula right here will be important to us later because this is what we're going to export as well, right? Whatever's been checked. So we're going to we'll just copy that in my clipboard. I'm going to use that several times here. Sticking with the checks for just a minute, what we want to be able to do is select and deselect these as whole. So if we go down here, we're going to change this button and we're going to worry about selecting them all for a moment. So we're going to say select all. And maybe we're going to take the font size there and knock it down to like an eight. Okay, select all. And then I'm going to take, there is a uh, radius, so border radius, and we'll set that to like 25. And so now you kind of get that rounded shape button. And if you wanted to make it a little less wide, you could make it a perfect circle. We're not going to fiddle that much, but you get the idea. So what do you want to do when they select that? We are going to create a variable, so we're going to say update context, and we're going to set that variable to be var selected. I mean var select all, it sounds better. And we'll do a colon, and we're going to set that variable to true. And so then now if we go up here to our checkboxes, we're going to go to them, and we're going to say, hey, your default is actually going to be that variable, var select all. So right now you can see nothing is selected. And if we select a couple of these, right, that still all works the way it did before, that's good. Or if we hit select all, boom, we have got them all selected. So that is how that works. Now, if you unselect a couple, right? So we unselected one. If we hit select all again, it doesn't work, okay? So the whole idea of changing that variable by pressing this over and over again, it doesn't reset it true. It's like, it's already true. I'm not gonna do anything. So it's not affecting any of the pieces. So what you're always gonna do in this type of scenario is you're gonna duplicate this formula. So copy that colon paste. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, every time you press this, I want you to toggle it to false and then make it true. So now if we go here and we select all of them, well, they're all selected. Okay. We unselect one. We press this. It will select them all again. Unselect this one. Select all of them again. Unselect two. It'll select all of them again. Because what's happening here is every time you press this, it's say set the variable to false and then true. So the changing of the variable then forces everyone to re-render and that's what causes them all to be checked. So then if we wanted to have a deselect, we're going to need something very reverse of that. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my text on this and we're going to say, all right, I don't want you to always say select all. I'm going to say something like if var select all equals, or no, so var select all, it's a true or false variable. So if it's true, then what do we want this to say? We want this to say deselect all. Right, because the variable is true, that means they're all selected. And so then we want to deselect all. But if the variable is false, then we want to be able to select all. So right now you can see because the variable is true, right, deselect all is set there. Oh, and I don't like that the deselect is off the thing. So we're going to change that font size one lower to seven. There we go. Then we also need to change, right, so that's just the text. We got to change the uh, on select formula, right? What do we want to do here? And so we're going to do something very similar. We're going to say, hey, if var select all, so if it's currently true, then what do we want to do? 
we want to, we're going to take this formula. We're not going to do the same exact formula, but we're going to do the opposite of that. So now we just want to take where it says false. We're going to change that to true. And then where it says true, we're going to set that to false. And then we got to close our if right here. And so now if when it says deselect all, they're all unselected. Yay. Select them all. Yay. So just a little quick bonus piece here. I guess it really wasn't quick. It probably took me longer than I wanted. But I think that's important because if you're going to export a CSV, you probably want to select what you export. So the other thing we want to do here is I don't want them to see this bar. Well, the bar is too big, right? So let's first go here and see that, hey, right now its height is flexible. We don't want that. Turn that off. We really just want your height to be like 50. Okay, so that makes that smaller. And uh, with that container selected also, we're going to say align vertical. So that way everybody's kind of the middle. I like that much better. And then we're going to, once again, with the container still selected, we're going to change its visible to be not just true, but we're going to say not is empty. And then remember a little filter function a minute ago right there. So what that's going to do is that's going to, if, if there's nothing selected, right? So if nothing selected is empty would be true. The opposite of true is false. So that would not be visible. But when something is selected, then is empty will be false. The opposite of false is true, so it'll be visible. So you can see, as soon as I select the first thing, there you go, they're all there. And then if we um, unselect all these things, then that goes away. Like a way, you know, because we don't want that functionality. Maybe you always want it there. I don't know, I wanted you to show, see that trick though. I think that is super helpful in making a better user experience. Um, as we drive by here, we're also gonna make this font bigger, 18, right? Make it, you probably wanna format it, right? Look and feel is not our, our jam here, functionality. But now that we've got this all working, now we're ready to export this data. And so to do that, we're going to jump over here to this button. We're going to change the text on this to say export. We're going to make its font size 7 as well, so that way it um, lines up with the other one. And then set its border radius also to 25, like so. Right, So they kind of look very similar. Okay, now, now that they look similar, here we go. So the first thing we need to do when you export data is you are going to use the JSON function. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to say update context bar JSON. So we're going to create a variable and we're going to pipe into that the JSON function. And so the JSON function, like we've used it before, like we're uploading files, like to do some different data conversions. So one of the things it can do is it can turn a, your table collection into a JSON array, which is what Flow wants. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say Hey, JSON, I want you to work on that same data, right? That's the table of information. And then we're going to do a comma. And then we're going to say we want to do an ident for um, data type or format. Close this. And then close our curly and close this. Now, when we do this, we're going to get an error. This error is expected, right? If you hover, the JSON function cannot serialize tables, objects with nested property called checkbox one type of control, right? Basically, it's saying you got stuff in there that I don't know how to deal with. So while that filter is the right records, we've now got to pare it down. So the first thing I want you to do when you do this is I want you to use show columns. And all we're going to do, and we're going to go right here after a filter, we're going to do a comma and a close. So right in here is the columns we want to show. And the only column I want you to show right now is the purchase order column. So just in my case, it's purchase order, blah, 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 blah. And so then that should tell it to show that particular column. And then oh, it looks like it got rid of my parenthesis. We'll put my parenthesis back. Okay, so now it's happy. Now, if you're struggling with what column to put here, we can go back here to our gallery. Look, I could have just copy and pasted this into there. And then that way I would know the exact thing. For your very first little go here, I just want you to literally show just the one text column to make sure that you've got it working. Because you guys are going to leave comments below. I got confused. I got too many things going on. Baby steps. Do it one column at a time so you know what column screwed it up. But now that that's there, if we hold down the Alt key and press the button, boop. And then we were to insert ourselves a label. Oh, not there. Delete that. We're going to click on the whole screen, not even the screen container, the whole screen, and we're just going to insert a label so we can see what's going on, okay? This is just a quick sanity check for us. And then here we're going to do var JSON. And look, so that function made an array, right? So the square brackets means an array. The curly brackets means a record. And then there's one column, CR662 purchase order one. And then it says the word purchase order three, which is expected. So this is our... Okay, that all makes sense. Now, if that JSON scares you, I want you to go watch that video up there 
because it's all about how JSON works. You have got to be comfortable with JSON if you're going to do anything intermediate or advanced with Power Apps. So if you've never watched that video, JSON scares you, that's your jam. Okay, so let's go back over here. So we've shown the column. That's the one column that we wanted in there. So now what else we probably want to see? So we need the purchase order. Uh, we probably want to do, you know, order date. So we could just go right here and make sure you're in the right spot. And what might be easiest to do at this point is kind of break things up. So go here after your filter and hit enter. And so, and then go after all this. So now I kind of know that everything that goes right here, this is just going to be kind of column after column because we're going to go here and do a comma. And so now we know we want to do the date. So we start typing order date and we do that. Now, if you're having a hard time, now just hit the button again, boop. And look, order dates down there. So we're good, right? So we're not going to keep doing that every time, but I want you to know like, you can just go one at a time, right? So that's order date. Now for total amount, same type of thing. We're going to do this and then we'll do total amount. Now we've got status and supplier. Now these are both harder than they, they should be, right? If you do status straight up. So if we do a comma and we start typing status. So there's status order items. And so if we, or we want this one, status, status. If we do this, like, all right. It took it, must be fine, but if we press the button, boop, it gives you two, one, three, zero, one, two, boom, 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 right? We don't want that. We want to see status canceled. So this is one of the challenges of Dataverse. When I told you I had just enough complexity to make this interesting. And so in this case, that particular column type, that's giving you the ID instead of the text. So you're like, well, I want the text. So you could try something like put text around it. But if you do that, show columns doesn't understand functions inside of there. So that is not going to work. Boo. So what we've got to do now at this point, let's get rid of that, is we need to go back up here and we're going to do another thing. So that was show columns. We need to also do what is called add columns. So I'm going to go here after my show col or yeah, after my show columns. We go right here, we're going to hit shift enter and we're going to type in add columns. And so then if we closed here and put a comma at the end, that would be right, except now we need to add a column. Okay, so now to add a status column, what we're going to do is we're going to call it stat okay because you're not going to see this later we want a name that we know is ours so we might even do it in all caps i probably do it in all caps i like that stat and so then here i want you to start to type in status again and so we got this right status code but you don't want the code so now if you put the text function around it close our parentheses there and now if we go down here and do a comma now there is stat right and seeing the beauty of having an all caps you know that's the thing we just made and now if we press the button boop stat canceled yeah okay so that was one thing i had to figure out if you have a choice column in dataverse then you're going to have to use a text function you have to do an add column because you can't do show columns with that right like these are the goofy nuances why it takes me all day to figure this stuff out and i just make quick videos i'm so kind same thing for supplier so if we go back over here and look at supplier it's this item supplier dot supplier name so let's copy that because we want that in a second but that is a Reminder that this is a lookup to pull the supplier name in. So if you try to use that with show columns, you can't say show that nested column. That's not going to work. Boo. So up here in the add columns, we're going to go right here after the close of our text function. We're going to do a comma and then we'll do a sup for suppliers, right? Sup, sup dog. Man, what's up with you? I'm weird. I know. It's okay. And then we'll do a comma and then we'll paste in our supplier supplier name. And then now, as you probably guess, if we go down here and do a comma sup, it's like the word sup, um, and then press the button, boop, sup is global traders. Okay, so there you go. We've got the data that we want, right? Like that's what we want to send over. The other nice thing about my little label trick play, other than it get, helped you with the sanity, all right, copy this out. So if we're going to kind of highlight in here, say control C, and you have to be in play mode to copy it, but we're going to use that in just a moment. So I want you to copy that. And then what I really want you to do is open up Notepad, and I love me some Notepad, and just paste that in. Because you might want to be able to look at it in a minute, and I think just having this good to go right in your face is great, so having a Notepad as a scratch place is going to work well. So pull this back off the screen. At this point, we could delete the label. The other thing you might want to test at this point, though, so if I select two, right, there's two selected, and we press export, boop. Oh, then you got to make your thing, so click on a label and say uh, overflow is scroll. There we go. But now you got one square bracket to start the array, and then there's your first record, and then there's a comma, and then there's your second record. So you can see the data, right? Like, if this isn't working, then the flow's not going to work. So prove that this works. So speaking of the flow, let's build a flow now.
So let's go over here. Let's click on Power Automate and say Create New Flow. We are just going to create from blank. That's always what we do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an input. We're just going to add text, right? There's not an array option, so it's just text. So we're going to say text, and we're going to call this my JSON. And then we don't need any other data types. We're good. So the first step you need to do now that you've got the JSON is you're going to need to parse the JSON. So we type in parse JSON and under data operations, these cute little purple icons, you're going to parse JSON. It's going to say what content do you want to parse? We're going to use the dynamic content, scroll all the way to the bottom and use my JSON. For the schema, you can manually type it or you say generate from sample. And remember just a second ago when I copied that, look at that. So there it is. And because this is well formatted, when we say done, it's going to say, okay, you're going to give me an array. It's going to have an object, a record. And then in there, there are the different columns and their data types. They're all strings except for total amount, which is an integer. They're all required. Perfect. Okay. So the beauty of parsing the JSON is now Power Automate Cloudflow understands that data. Like it's like, oh, cool. I know what all this is. So we can work with it. And so speaking of work with it, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say new step and we're going to say CSV. When you do CSV down here, once again, the cute little purple, create CSV table. So the built-in data operation. Where do you want to create it from? This time you want to be smart. Oh, scroll up a little bit. You want to create it from the body of the parse JSON, right? Look at all my column names. Yeah. Then what we're probably going to do is say show advanced options. And so if you just give it this, it'll just do its own thing, which could be good. But we know that like my dates and my um, currency aren't quite right. So we got to fix up some things. My column names are goofy. So we're just going to change this to custom. And now we're going to start in here. And so the first one we'll do is purchase order. And then the value, we're going to go down over here. Once again, we got scroll and we'll scroll. And look, right in there is purchase order one. Because that one we just want straight over. If we go here, how about the next thing? We got supplier. Same deal, we'll go in and we want sup. Uh, status, we'll do status. And I'm just doing like, you probably put them in a different order. Oh, not there, Shane, right here. See what happens when I talk? Status, okay, so we did the three easy ones. Now we know that if we did order date, right, if we drag this back over, yes, that's an order date, but ooh, what user wants to see that? Probably none, right? Especially if you were pulling this out for, you know, to people to consume. So what we're gonna do, so we're going to actually I'm going to copy that before I leave it. Copy. We'll go over here. We're going to say order date. And it doesn't let you do spaces in the names, if you're wondering. So that's why there's no spaces there. So order date. And under expressions, there is a dun 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 dun. Under date and time, see more. There is a format date time. Once a timestamp and a format and the locale. And there with the question marks there, it's telling you both of them are optional. So we'll go there. Now, it's what format do you want? So you can put the comma there or the cursor there. If you say dynamic content, once again, because flow is evil, it won't help you because it's like, I don't have any date times. You don't, you have the string that I want you to choose. <clears throat> say, okay. So that functions, expression is not gonna work. That's all right. Go here. Now go grab the date time because now it shows up, order date. Kind of double click on that, control C, delete that. Go back up here, put your cursor between them and paste this in. Now, this little at symbol here at the beginning, you don't want that, so delete that. It should start with item, and then it should end with your column with a square bracket, right? So whatever extra characters they give you, just delete them. And then now you want the format. So you do a comma, and it's like, hey, I need to know the single letter uh, that you want from ISO 8601 format. So I will leave a uh, link down in the video description that has the, the different formats, but basically, I want to use the D format. So I'm going to put my cursor here, single quote, and then a D. And so that's one of the many different formats um, that's available to you. So you want to choose the right one, or you can handcraft your own one. But that is what I want. So that should give us a better one. So we'll say update. And then last but not least, we have total amount. And then for here, for total amount, we're going to kind of do the same game again. We're going to go here to expressions, and we're going to say format data by example. And then we're going to try total amount, like so. And then what would we expect from the total amount? It's gonna be one, two, oh, there's that stupid typing bug again, Microsoft. And then we want the output to be comma, or not, that's a dollar sign, right? One, two, five, zero. Get expression, let's see what it does. Hey, that's how it uses format number. That is what I wanted. 
and we know that that would work. I could do a test here if I'm willing to type in this silly thing again, test expression, that would have put out, oh, so it didn't get my comma, I didn't put a comma here, how rude of me. Let's try this again, get expression again. All right, there's the format. So let's try a bigger number again, test expression, there's a comma, yay! Okay, now we say apply and it will just say, all right, I'm gonna put that in there for you. And so it put the formula right in. That was the upside of telling it the column ahead of time. Okay, so now we've created a CSV table. Pretty straightforward. So now we've got that, now we wanna do something with it. At this point, you could do whatever you want. You could create a file in OneDrive or SharePoint. You could go upload a file to Dataverse. You can email the file. You could push it to an FTP server. I don't know what you wanna do with a CSV file. I don't care. You have a file. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to send it off to an email. So we'll do an Outlook, and then we'll find send email in here. Oh, it's right there. For the two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prompt in Power Apps. So let's go back over here, add an input, say an email, we'll call it my email. And remember, I just always put like my in front of there, so I'm not using a generic word. So when I see my email, I'm like, that's literally the email I put in, All right? We'll go here, add dynamic content, and then scroll to the bottom. There's my email, perfect. Subject, here is your PO export, like so. And the body, we'll just say see attached for now. And then under show advanced options, we're gonna go down here and under attachment name, we're going to do export.csv. And then for attachment content, scroll down the bottom. And from our create CSV table, we have that output. So we're just going to stick that in there. That all looks fine and dandy to me. So let's give this our um, export CSV video. Then we can hit save. Okay, then it brings us back over here. So now that's in my flow. So now we can go back and hit our export button. And what do we need to do? All right, we've, it generates var JSON, semicolon. Oh. And then here we're going to say export CSV video dot run. And it first says, hey, I need the my JSON. So that's going to be var JSON. In the email, we're just gonna use the logged in user's email. So if you wanted to hard code someone's email, give them a picker for it, I don't care what you do, right? We're not gonna get lost there, but Whatever you send here, that's who the email is gonna to go to. So we'll say play. We got two things selected. So we'll press the button, boop. And in just one moment, I should get an email. All right, we got the email. Fingers crossed, we're going to click on export CSV. Ta-da! Are you excited? I'm excited. There you go, it didn't blow up my face. Look, there's the uh, total amount formatted. There's the order dates using that fancy D format that we gave them. Everything looks exactly like what I was expecting, so. So we've made a CSV file. And like I said, now that you understand that that's how you make the file, if you go back over to the flow, you can do whatever you want with the flow. Let's go to Power Automate. Oh, I was in the right place. Go to Power Automate, this dumb thing out of the way. And if we say edit. So over here, once again, you could create the file in SharePoint, uh, OneDrive, Dataverse. You could upload it to SQL. I don't know why you would, but you could. You could push it to an FTP site. You can email it like we just did. I don't care what you do with the file now, you've got the file. What I wanted to add as a bonus thing is what if you wanted to, instead of send it as a file, you wanted to take that data and just make it a table and embed it in this email. So in reality, the same way we did create CSV table, if we hit a plus here and add an action, then what we can do is we can say HTML table. Look, under data operations, there is another one of those cute little create HTML tables. From where? You want to use the same data from your parse JSON. So we're going to use that body of, right, parse JSON body. And then we're, this time we're going to leave it on um, columns automatic. But same thing, you could change this to columns custom and then do what we did here, the same exact steps. We're just going to leave it automatic to make this go faster. And then now that you've got an HTML table, you probably already knew, but the body of a uh, email here can be HTML. So what if we just go here? and just insert from create HTML table the output. We'll do that, we'll say save, and now all we, or now what we do, right, we just close this thing up, we'll hit play, let's just pull in a third one, right, we got $6,000 worth of POs at this point. So we'll say export, boop, and look at that, there is the HTML body, and if we switch to light mode. Now, if you wanted to then have like borders around it or shading or any of that, then what you would just need to do is write the HTML, because in your flow, where we embedded that, you can modify that HTML. So you could add a style sheet to say, hey, make the table have borders or make your THs have a gray background. You know, you could do all that. And these, fixing all these column names and all that, remember we would just do that by going from automatic to custom and then going through the same steps that we did before. Oh, before we're done, I forgot. I told you I was gonna show you then what I do to package this up. 
Okay, so now this is all done. All right, what we're gonna do is we hit save up here. We gotta give this thing a na name, so we'll say video export CSV. We're gonna say save. Okay, so it's all saved. Now, you'd wanna publish, if you've been doing multiple saves along the way, which I hope you were, make sure that you're on the latest publish, because whatever you export will be the last published version. So now we'll get out of here, we'll leave. We're gonna go over here to solutions. You could create a brand new solution. I've already got one called export to CSV. So this is the one, right? This is the one that I built that I demoed ahead of time. It's got more of the formatting, looks a little nicer. But so we want to pull, pull in the one we just did. So we're gonna say add existing. We're gonna say app and Canvas app. We'll go up here to search. We'll search for CSV, video export CSV. We'll choose that and say add. Now when you add it, it only adds the app. But we know that there's a flow in the three tables that go with it. So what you want to do at that point is click the ellipses here, go to advanced and say add required objects. So now it's going to ask the app, what is everything you're looking for in life? And we're going to say add those required objects. And then now in just a moment, there you go. Now we've got the tables that we just created, uh, the flow that we created, all the pieces of the puzzle. And so then at this point, I can click over here on left and then I would publish all my customizations. You don't need to do that, but I do it out of habit just to make sure I don't miss anything. <laughs> and then when I go here to export, right, there's that publish again, we're gonna skip that. Next, this is gonna check to make sure that you have, that it has everything it thinks it needs. All right, I'm gonna take this out as unmanaged and say export. And now when this is finished exporting, I will be able to download it. And then you can always go get a copy of it if you go over to training.powerapps911.com and sign up for one of the mini subscriptions. Okay, so that's everything for today. Thoughts, questions, comments, leave them below. Always happy to answer them. Always looking for other ideas and whatnot. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.